Anyone else hearing the seagulls wake up? Hello and welcome back and that is right today we are returning to the tricksy dipsy subject of unofficial memory upgrades for Synology now. So when I made my video a few weeks ago the DSM 7.1 unofficial memory upgrades I think it's the closest I've ever got to on this channel to any form of controversy. A lot of you disagree with that video and you emulated similar or exact tests to what I did and got different results. And in the intervening time since I've made that video, I have learned some things. I most certainly have learned some things. I have seen that some of the stuff I did in that video was either not done right or that when I did uh, do the setup for some of those memory setups for the 16 gig there, particularly, I did not give the system enough time. So again, the thank you for the people that highlighted that to me in the comments and even the ones that sent me to some of the recommendations from Synology themselves but because of that and lots of stuff that I'm going to talk about in this video I wanted to readdress the subject not only because of the, the things I've learned in the interim thanks to you guys but on top of that to correct some of the mistakes I have made head on now not all of the things from that previous video are completely discounted or wrong there are still some question marks and later on in the video after i've gone through a whole pile of memory in these two systems the ds220 plus and the ds920 plus i'm going to address the most common four questions that i received over and over about that video and the results that were on there so first and foremost you must have noticed along the time bar this is going to be a long video i've tried my best to storyboard this as best i can in advance to kind of get the uh, the working practice of all the different tests in a row to make sure that i can do as few cuts as possible and therefore not show anything where i'm doing an installation and then cut through any time where i think there's dead air i'm just going to kind of speed up the footage that was one of the main errors i think in my previous video i was trying to be too rushed because I had the camera running and I wanted to show that I was doing no cuts or edits to the video but still felt compelled to fill the space. So therefore in this video I'm going to try my best to do that slightly less. The second thing is what I'm doing today is trying lots of memory types but repeating the same ones as before. So all of the memory that I'm going to be utilizing today, um, 8Data, Crucial, Sabrent, we've got some new ones entering the channel, Transcend, um, all of them uh, time check and more are linked in the description with their model IDs. So if you are interested in knowing which memory modules are used and how they compare against the ones that you use, then you can use that uh, down there to find out more. Now, the test setup for this video is going to be, if you haven't already skipped forward to it using the chapters, I'm going to be using these two NASes. And if I have two of the same module, I'm going to test the same module in both of them. But sometimes, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to be using a different memory module and then indicating them with on-screen DSM and Synology system for both of them running. The first test I'm going to be doing is testing these two systems with no memory upgrades to show you that they are functioning normally and that they can make their way into the DSM installation splash screen. Then I'm going to be doing the first installation with a couple of very small memory modules inside these and installing the latest version of DSM 7 inside if it will let me. Spoiler alert, of all the testing I've done on and off camera, I've got to say it's been largely successful. Okay, there's only been a few little bumps, which I will talk about later in the video. Um, after that, after I've done the DSM 7.1 installation, and again, this is uh, the 18th of May 2022. After that, I'm going to use that same installation on these two drives. And right now, we are running a migratable SSD, and in here, we are running a fresh hard drive with no DSM on it, uh, no files or anything on it on at all. After that, we're going to be using the same installation of DSM and then testing each of the memory modules. And with every shutdown, one of the big errors I made last time was holding that button to shut down. And it turns out that was causing one of the biggest problems with what we were doing. But again, go to later on in the video to learn out more about that. But that's really it. All the, They're all featured. Again, I'm going to go through it and try and be as clear as possible and show them all on there. I'm only going to do the one clean install first at the beginning. And I think 
that's pretty much it. So for now, let's go ahead, begin our testing. I'm going to have to rearrange everything on the table, do our tests, go through your questions. And at the end, I just want to show you a way of um, testing the memory on DSM 7.1 that I've discussed before in other videos, just to double check that the memory is up to par. But for now, let's make our way over to the test setup. Okay, so first test we want to do is to see that these boot with no additional memory. Remember, the 920 and the 220 Plus, both of them have already got two and four gig of memory inside soldered to the board. So they don't need any memory modules inside to boot. So let's boot them both now. We'll let those two do their booting sequence. On screen, if not now, then very, very soon, you'll see that I've already got the Sonology Assistant running. And both of these systems have been set up with no DSM. They've got one drive each, and I'm sure I've covered this in the order in the introduction. I'm sorry if I'm being repetitious. I'm filming this slightly out of sequence. Um, I've left that big old style UK old school big clock there in the background so we can see all of these happening. I'm going to have to make some cuts in this video because it's going to run really long otherwise and it's already going to be quite a long video going by my timeline but for now we can already see that our 220 has already started booting there again if i angle it ever so slightly you can see that there isn't a memory module in that slot there and it's only the single drive inside there the 920 as well has just started booting if i angle that slightly you can make out that empty bay inside there Again, that's running on a WD Red hard drive there. So again, on the screen, just off camera, I'm just going to very quickly, you're going to have to put up with me doing this occasionally, by the way. Uh, I can see that right now, both of them have started booting there. We've got the migratable drive in the 220, and we've got the 920 drive there. So again, running absolutely fine as normal. So again, I'm not going to bother... Um, seeing these through to the complete DSM 7.1 installation as they are with no memory upgrade, it's completely unnecessary. But again, we've got one migratable drive to start with, and we've got that standard ready to rock drive on the other one. So let's power these two down. I do not recommend uh, shutting these down in this fashion. Um, but again, just because we're going to be doing so many tests with so many different memories, we've already sort of thrown caution to the wind a little bit. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to select our first memory pairing. Um, so our first test is going to be the ADATA 4 gig memory modules. Let's shut those down, give those a moment. So again, these are two modules of ADATA 4 gig. I'm not sure how well that's going to focus on there. We have two modules. We're putting one in each of them to double test. So again, this is a fresh installation in the previous video. A fresh installation with no DSM on board and no drives worked fine. Just to be on the safe side, let's get that memory module in there. Let's get that there. There, and click. Both of them are in. And the same goes for our 920. All secured in there I'll try and show these whenever I remember to do so so there is both of those modules ready installed in sight so let's boot these up wallop wallop again these should be fine we we'll leave that cover over there so kind of similar time frame we're working with here again sometimes what I might do rather than cut the video is speed it up so if I do that in the video just keep an eye on that clock there in the background uh, but for now, this is the ADATA 4 gig modules. Let's have a little look there. Right, so our 220 has started to boot there with that module. So let's go ahead and refresh uh, the Synology Assistant there in the background. So we can see that the migratable 220 has appeared. And what we'll do, and now our 920 is booted online. Again, a lot of people did reach out to me after the previous video, and certainly, I've got to agree, a number of you were right. I rushed a lot of the memory testing there. I needed to give it a lot more time in some cases. Again, I got wrapped up in the video of trying to make sure there was no cuts in the video and keep trying to chat to camera, and let's be honest, there was no happy middle ground there. So again, I, I completely dropped the ball on that one. But for now, we can see that they've both booted. Let's rescan. Do we have both of our NASs? And what I'm going to do now, seeing as they've both appeared there on the network, they're migratable, and they're ready to install. I'm going to install DSM 7.1 on both of these, and then we're going to power down the devices 
and reboot them. They've both got 7.1 on board anyway, but I'm going to install that 7.1 now. I might keep on camera and fast forward it up, who knows, but let's get 7.1 set up on the systems. Okay, so the rebooting is pretty much well on the way. Uh, we're still waiting for it to refresh there on the browser. But it looks like it's going for the standard package installation and setup. Other tests after this one, I'm just going to skip a lot of the installation area and download a PAT file. I just wanted that first test to show you that it's the latest version of DSM being installed on both of these devices. So DSM 7.1 was already on there. But there'd been like two or three different updates since then. But for now, it looks like we're all pretty much getting into the installation process. So once that's done, what I'm going to do is uh, just put in some standard login credentials. Then we're going to power the device down and then reboot the device up for that last time there. And then we're going to go ahead and start installing some other memory modules. But for now, I'll leave that to do its thing and we're in. Right, so um, again, hopefully you can see that on screen, the DS220 NAS there. We can see that 4 gig of memory there in the middle of the screen, lovely and visible. And in the case of the 920, we can make a way in. And there is in the uh, information center, boom, there is the 4 gig inside and the 4 gig we've just installed there. So again, lovely stuff there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to shut these systems down clean and then we're going to reboot them. Again, what I want of the things I'm doing now is leaning over about three different bits of equipment. So I apologize if the camera shakes ever so slightly when I'm doing this stuff, but I've created an absolute nightmare uh, behind this camera, behind the tripod, a laptop, cables and my microphone. So therefore, I'm having an absolute nightmare of a time trying to reach over everything. But I just wanted to make sure everything's on camera. So we can see they're both shut down. So now we're going to try the reboot with our RAID data modules. And as we can see there, it's pretty much everything we saw before. What we're going to do is just give this a few minutes just to do its thing. Okay then, so it looks like they've both appeared there on the local area network and indeed hopefully the IPs have remained exactly the same and we can see there we can make our way into them both. I'm going to go ahead and try to do this without knocking everything over in the world. Again, we'll let it do its thing. It is going to be a bit slow. I am rushing this system just the tiniest bit. There we go, in the package center, we'll ignore in all that stuff with create and stuff. And go into the control panel, there is our memory, we are booting there. We'll go into the next one, info center, there's our message there. So again, both systems showing all of that lovely memory. We're not getting any kind of angry notification, which is something we might normally see here at the top right of the screen. On top of that, while we're doing all of this, let's come out of it there on both of these. It's worth highlighting again that this is a fresh installation. So what we're doing here right now isn't going to be exactly the same as the setup you're running at home. Uh, the other thing, again, I should have mentioned this in the, in the other video, but you can, on the settings of this, go uh, on the Synology Assistant, find a device you want to check, uh, and go from here. And then what you can do is do a memory test. Again, I do recommend running one of these whenever you are going to be using um, unofficial memory. Just because, again, it's the idea of Synology support system there. Whether you like it or not, again, at least they've thrown this in, which is something at least. And again, I would recommend using that even on their own modules. But for now, what I'm going to do is now shut down each of these devices. And we're going to make our way onto our next memory modules there while it does that there in the background. So shut down. So we've got those doing their thing. We'll let those shut those down. So our next test is going to be 8 gig modules. So we're going to be going with an 8 gig module from TimeTech. This is the 8 gig. And what we're going to do, I'm going to bring that closer to the camera so you can slightly make that out without the text blurring. But we're going to use an 8 gig TimeTech module and pop that there. And then we're also going to now use 
an 8 gig Sabrent module. Now the Sabrent modules are quite new, they're a faster frequency as well. A number of you have messaged me about there's any inherent benefits of using these. I can say right now in these systems, probably not. This is 3200 megahertz memory um, and therefore using it inside this these cap out much lower than that. The newer systems, however, they can take advantage um, of uh, higher frequency memory and hopefully if sometimes you go down the road of sticking with the Celeron series um, for future releases, then fingers crossed, this sort of memory may be beneficial there. But for now, what we're gonna use is the Sabrent 8 gig memory inside the 220 and we're going to be utilizing the 8 gig TimeTech in the DS920. So those have shut down. Let's get those open. There's our eight gig module. Oh, sorry, our four gig A data, that's come out. So what we're gonna do is install this. Again, get that locked in. The foil on these do make it slightly tricksy. Let's get that on there. Again, the Sabrent so memory arrives with a kind of metal heat shield there on the top. So it kind of pushes up from the base of the platform. So next on the other one, we're going to remove the memory that's in there. And again, that's the A data. I'm sorry about all the repetitious nature of this. We can see that there. We're getting our eight gig. I know I'm holding it slightly unhelpfully, but again, you try doing this at this angle. Okay, we're all clipped in on either side, as you can see, all in. As you can see on this one, all in. So now we're gonna go ahead and boot these up. And still, I'm not sure about how that's gone in. I'm gonna double check that in just a moment if this doesn't work for that one. But 920 and 220. Now this is where we started seeing problems in my previous video, because we saw kind of forced shutdowns. And that's when we were using preset DSM systems. Now, at the moment, we're seeing spin up. So again, this is where I'm still trying to figure out in our previous videos what happened. Because we know that sometimes now this will take longer. Indeed, Synology's own web pages, someone sent me a link on NAS Compares Inquiries, thanks a lot, um, detailing that the process it takes for these systems to identify the memory when you install a new module can take more time, sometimes up to 10, 15, even, even 20 minutes, hence why we've got the clock. So what I'm gonna do is leave this to do its thing while we boot up these two modules, because it may take longer. Although the Sabrent has surprised me, the Sabrent has already started the initial boot sequence there, something I genuinely didn't think would happen. But, so what we'll do on the sidelines here is I'm just getting ready with uh, Synology Assistant. And hopefully from there, we'll be able to get into our DS220. So the 220 has appeared, uh, and hopefully we can just refresh that same tab from earlier, get ourselves logged in. That sounds like the 920 is playing the game as well. We'll go into our 920. And yes, it looks like we've got ourselves a boot. So here we go, we'll go into the control panel, go into the information center, scroll over, and there we go. Our eight gig plus the two gig inside has resulted in that 10 gig module there. Again, we are not getting the notification telling us it's wrong. Um, go into the control panel there, go into the information center, scroll in, and again, four gig plus eight gig module. We have ourselves a success there. So those are still working for us. We've not received the notification telling us off and we are using the latest version of DSM 7.1 at the time of recording. So let's go ahead and shut these down again. And this time we're gonna try some 16 gig modules. Bear in mind, although we've already done so, at the 16 gig mark, that's when we're really going to be pushing kind of the recommended maximums of these systems. Again, we've got that shut down. So again, let's get our next module out of there. Let's have a look. Move you around. Clip you either end, there we go. Again, 
So that's our time. That's our uh, time tech out of there. Next one. Let's get our massive Sabrent 16 gig module out of there. So again, six. I'm uh, sorry, our eight gig Sabrent there. So next up for our next test, we're going to be using a crucial 16 gig module. And again, if this fails, we have another 16 gig module in reserve to make sure if it's the memory module or not. And we're going to be moving on to a time tech 16 gig module here. So we've got the time tech. Let's bring it close to the camera. And again, hopefully on screen, all of these model numbers will be here. Otherwise, I'll put them in the comments. And of course, the crucial 16 gig module. And again, all of these are dual rank or DR rated memory there. And again, both of these are 2,666 megahertz memory. So let's get our first module there. Let's have a look, get you in there. Clipped in, as we can see, all ready to rock. So let's leave that to, actually no, we'll boot them together. It's better to have a nice comparison of the time frame, isn't it? Um, let's go with our next module here. And we're all clicked in, we're all applied. And once again, this is one of the tests that we did before where it didn't seem to work. So for now, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. But for now, let's boot them. Let's boot those up. Leave those to do their thing. And we're seeing that same spin up. So again, the mystery of our previous video. Again, maybe you know better than me. Tell me in the comments why you think previously they didn't seem to work. Now, when we did the 16 gig test in the previous video, this was one of the modules that booted, but we had this for a while. And this is where I made a big mistake in my previous video. That was when I ignored the system. I left it for three, maybe three and a half minutes and went, nope, it's not working and walked away. And a number of you were keen to point out and keen being the night, one nice way to say angry, that I didn't leave it for substantially longer as per a lot of recommendations found online, which is again, why we got the clock. So what we're gonna do now is leave that to do its thing. I'm gonna go make myself another coffee. I'll be right back. <laughs> Maybe I'm not gonna get time to make that coffee yet because we've already got our 220 here. So let's have a little look and get our Synology Assistant up and the 920 is playing the game now. So again, we're seeing markedly different results from our previous video there. So again, let's carry on. Again, for those of you in the comments, please do let me know where you think I went wrong there compared with the previous tests to now. But for now, let's carry on. We've got both of our NASes going through the boot sequence. Okay, so we're on the desktop of both of them. So let's go once again into the information center. And again, on the DS220, we've got that two gig and an additional 16 gig module. Now again, this does draw into question how much of that we can actually use when we're exceeding the manufacturer's recommended maximum of how much uh, that CPU can actually handle. But again, there is the 16 gig and the four gig internal for our DS920 and seemingly, from what we've seen so far, we are seeing booting and we are seeing operation there. So again, what we'll do now is we'll come out of these. We'll do our final round of testing of this memory before we move on to a slight change of pace. So let's bring that down, shut you down. Bring you down, shut you down. And we'll make our way on to our final modules. So. Those are our 16 gig modules. So again, we're gonna do another 16 gig memory module here. This time we're doing the Sabrent 16 gig module there, and that's going to be on the DS920. And now we're going to move over to Transcend. Now Transcend is uh, a company that again, budget memory, let's be honest, uh, for the most part. And this is a nice, simple eight gig Transcend module there. So again, eight gig, 
in uh, 220, 16 gig inside the Sabrent while we use all of these different types. So again, we'll get this next memory module out. And again, there is our time check 16. And we'll get this installed in there. Both clipped in. And on the case of the 920, let's get you out of there. Man, would have loved to have that coffee. There's our Crucial, we'll remove that over there. And we're replacing it with our 16 gig Sebren. Again, that big heat shield there. It really does seem to push up from the main board of the NASDAQ. But again, we've got them installed. We can see that inside there clipped in i'm not thoroughly convinced by the insert there on that one but let's carry on booting in three two one boom and boom i'll leave those to do their things i'm not saying i want one of these to take a while but i would love to have that next coffee okay seemingly doing well so what we do is we're just going to leave this to do its thing Okay, so it looks like we've got our um, DS220 here, so we can get started on that at the very least. I think I can hear the hard drive in the 920 there spinning up as well, so I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting some good news from that one uh, in due course. So let's go ahead and go for the 220. Again, get that logged in. Going for the control panel there, going in for the information center, and boom, there is that eight gig of transcend memory working with the two gig of onboard memory there. Now, we're still getting a slightly slower boot up from the 920, but we've discussed that already uh, for what we've learned from the previous video. So let's move over now to that 920. Hopefully that's booted, and it should have appeared on the Synology Assistant. Let's do a quick research, just so you know. We are still using the same NAS throughout all of this testing. There is our 220, and hopefully our 920 will appear, because it must appear, because we can definitely see it here. So I don't know why that's taking so long to appear on the Assistant, but we'll carry on nonetheless and come back to the Assistant in just a moment. Carry on there. into the control panel, into the information center, and boom, that 16 gig of Sabrent, uh, 2, uh, sorry, 3200 megahertz DDR4 memory there is being recognized within that manager. And again, we're not getting any of the alerts that we were talking about before. And once again, just so we're all on the same page, we can see the DSM version is up to date. That is the latest version of DSM. Right, so let's summarize a lot of the test today as well as address a lot of the questions from the previous video. It looks like every single memory module we tested to the, all intents and purposes seemed to work. They all agreed, they all appeared on the control panel of these two NASs. We did a fresh installation and we did DSM 7.1 at the latest revision on today the 19th of May, the latest version available, and it booted fine. Um, so what we're going to do now is to shut these down, and then we're going to talk through a few things. So first and foremost, while we're shutting these down, let's talk about the results of the previous videos and sort of address some of the most common questions that I was contacted about on it. So first and foremost, a lot of people said that, um, I say a lot of people, we're talking a handful, um, it's highlighted that perhaps the reason they didn't boot was the memory module wasn't preset correctly. Now, I've repeated a test with memory not being inserted correctly several times since that video. And in every instance that I've attempted it, the system still booted. It didn't short it in any way. But just to highlight that point, what we're going to do is we're just going to remove this memory module, but we're not going to insert it properly. We're going to install it sort of slightly jagged out of the bay. So it's not only just not inserted, it's slightly at an angle and not in perfect alignment there. It can't even flatten down because it's not in perfect alignment. Half of the module is in the bay and the other half isn't. 
So if we boot that up, because that was one of the questions I received. It was that in the test I installed the memory whereby the system would boot up for a you know 10 to 15 seconds at most and then power down. A lot of people said it was because I didn't insert the memory. Remember, this system's core memory is already soldered to the board inside. But even now, as you can see, with the memory module not fully installed in correctly, it's still booting. It's half pushed in. It can't be sprung down. I'm even touching it, which is incredibly unsafe. But as you can see, it's still booting. We're just going to give it a moment. Let's hear the beep. We're getting the green lights. I forgot this one doesn't beep. But if we go ahead on my screen, refresh that page. Maybe we're giving it a bit of the bums rush. Let's give it a moment. Let's see that bad boy boot. And as you can see, it's still letting us see it. And if we go into uh, the software once again, we'll log in. We've got the beeping noise. We go in, go into the control center, go into the info center. And as you can see, it's not recognized that module because I've not installed it correctly. But the memory module not being fully installed did not make this system cease booting. So again, that kind of throws out that theory that maybe the reason it wasn't booting correctly was to do with their memory module not being fully installed. Uh, the next one, a lot of people argued I was using perhaps bad memory. Maybe I'd got sweat from my fingertips on the memory modules. Let's let that boot that. However, most of the memory modules that I've tested up to this point, not only on that video, but on other videos, were the ones I tested. And as you can see, they did indeed work. So they weren't bad modules because they were still doing their job. There's the other module back there. Let's put that with the transcend pile. So again, they're not bad modules. They still work. So that couldn't have been the reason that it stopped it booting a few times. Next, a lot of people highlighted, and this for me is the most credible argument, that it was a bad boot loop. From between my tests, I kept holding down the button and unsafely shutting down the system. Now, I did that for the sake of brevity in the video, so I wouldn't have to do cuts or speed things up, where a lot of people might argue afterwards that what I'm doing there, I could have interfered there in the middle. Like That video only has, I believe, one cut at one point for the sake of necessity. Now, when I held the button down to shut these systems down, what was happening is the system had an idea of what its configuration was, and then I was installing a new memory module, and therefore it was failing its own initialization. So again, a few people were keen to highlight that, and again, I've investigated that a little bit since, and only a few, well, by a few I mean two or three occasions, was I able to re emulate what happened but nowhere near with enough accuracy and even in the instances that people have since reported that they've installed a new memory module they've pressed the power button and then it's powered down after two or three attempts then the memory worked so there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to that happening and i'm still investigating that in the background i know a lot of people have been running tests on these memory modules not only people i'm in communication with but just generally online since that video, I've looked into it and people have been sharing a lot of their model IDs that work and that's just fantastic. Um, so the fourth thing that a lot of people said is, and again, this is one that I thought was one of the strangest arguments. A lot of people were saying that the reason I made the video uh, where I was running a DSM 7.1 setup and the memory modules weren't working was because I didn't want to promote unofficial memory modules or I had no vested, I, like, I was trying to be a Synology fanboy or whatever about um, promoting Synology products and not showing unofficial memory working. Now, it's an interesting theory, and of course I do feature Synology on this channel among many, many other brands. Indeed, in the background of this video, there's several. However, I've done more tests uh, and YouTube videos on uh, unofficial memory upgrades for Synology Now systems than I think anyone else on the internet, uh, particularly YouTube. And on top of that, I've done guides online. I've done many, many tests with these very same modules. Now, it would, if anything, be very much not in my interest um, if I was to put on my business hat, which unfortunately I've left at home, um, to start saying that memory doesn't work. One, because I've advised many, many people to go for unofficial memory and it would kind of look quite hypocritical. And secondly, when it comes to unofficial memory upgrades, I indeed, I run an unofficial memory upgrade setup myself. So 
again, running, you may have noticed during the course of this video, I had a NAS on that list of NASs there that is uh, one of my office backups. That I've still got that on DSM 6.2. I don't upgrade that system to 7 yet because I quite like some of the photo advantages, but also because I run an unofficial upgraded setup on that system. Now, when it comes to um, Synology, I'm fairly certain, and then again, I've spoken to lots of representatives from Synology all around the world, and I can quite honestly tell you they, they don't like uh, platforms like my own talking about unofficial memory upgrades. It's not within their ecosystem, but more importantly, they feel like they can't provide their support and setup. Now, I'm not going to agree or disagree with them. I'm merely emulating what I hear. But again, if I was someone that was just trying to get some sort of quasi-Synology favour, which at this late stage of NAS Compares would be weird, um, showing uh, memory, uh, memory modules working for the last few years would very much not be in their wheelhouse. So I hope that helps people that seem to think that I would show DSM 7.1 not booting memory as some sort of weird Synology promotion. Because if anything, it would be very late in the day to do something like that if I was of that frame of mind. Now, before we wrap this video up, I mentioned earlier on in the video that uh, there are ways and means to check if the memory working in your system, uh, you know, is going to, you know, you basically want to stress test it because notwithstanding a lot of people like myself that are running larger memory module setups such as the 16 gigs but there are people out there that will buy memory from brands they maybe have tried to save a few quid on so i mentioned about the stress testing so what we're going to do is we're going to insert a memory module inside this 920 what would be really amusing is if i install a memory module in this and it doesn't boot so let's find out but we're going to go for something slightly different we're going to go for probably the dullest memory module we're going to go for a two gig transcend there that's been sat on my table doing absolutely nothing let's remove the old memory as well that would help wouldn't it again there's our big 16 gig module so we're going to put in our super dull 2 gig uh, transcend module there. Pop that there. Got it clicked. Got it clicked. And again, why not? For the sake of funsies, let's reinsert our 16 gig. Um, let's get it. Our 16 gig time tech module inside there. The lighting has decided to go a bit weird. It suddenly got very sunny here in the UK. We're not going to worry ourselves too much with that so here we go we've got our 16 gig module inside there so for now we'll bring that lined up and hopefully my shirt isn't going to interfere with the lighting too much more get those booted up and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make our way over to the screen in just a moment when it's finished booting i'm just going to show you what happens when you perform a memory stress test bear in mind when you do a memory stress test on any nas two things happen one the synology assistant app um it stops you being able to use it. It kind of is an all-consuming thing. Secondly, you can't really use the NAS during. It, it doesn't completely bar you, but I wouldn't recommend it. And there you go. I got myself a coffee in the interim. Okay, we're not doing too bad for time, are we? But for now, let's leave those two to boot up. Fast forward now. Right, let's make our way in. So as you can see here on screen, we can leave those to boot and they're both there on there. So boom, both of our NASs are visible. We're not gonna worry too much about logging in. So in order to perform the memory testing, as mentioned, what we need to do is go to the cog at the top, make sure we click that tick there, click okay. And then from there, highlight the NAS you want to use and this new option has appeared. Select memory test, from there, click next and then enter your admin credentials and by admin credentials it's going to be the credentials you created earlier on get that logged in and then from here it's now going to reboot the system and also perform that memory test there now what's going to be interesting while i do this is once this 920 reboots is it now going to recognize that module as unofficial memory that's going to be interesting to see Man alive, those seagulls are kicking off, aren't they? Again, we can't use the Synology Assistant again outside of this. 
Um, and for now, we're just gonna let the system do its memory stress test and we'll leave that running there in the background. Let's slightly reposition these NASes while we summarize the end of this video. Because again, we've covered a lot of stuff today. I hope a lot of you who have come from that old video have you know seen a few things, learned a few things. We've still got lots of different memory modules here on the table that we're still waiting to test, as well as testing some of the Synology own memory in comparison. So again, we've of all the tests we've done today, I've got to say, now in my uh, in my previous video, I mentioned that within the confines of the testing that I performed, and it was very key to take that on board, or leave that to do its finish its stress test, that the results of the previous video were exactly that. They were the results of that video. They weren't indicative of all setups, and most certainly they shouldn't be used as a be all catch all video. And much in the same vein, this video has seemingly indicated then DSM 7.1 at the time of recording and at the latest revision available that you are still able to use third party memory. But once again, these results are of this video and this video alone. Maybe things will change in the future. Maybe Synology will decide to kick out some of that memory. We'll have to wait and see. Let's make our way into that uh, NAS once again. Again, I've nearly knocked over the tripod about 10 times at this point and only been able to see half the screen because it's behind the camera has certainly not helped but we make our way into the control panel we make our way into the information center and as we can see we've got that 16 gig memory module there in the ds220 plus and if we make our way into the ds uh, what's that? Uh, the ds920 uh, sorry make our way in it would be easier. Oh no, we're still not able to log into the system yet. Let's have a little look. It's still running its test setup there. As we can see, it's performing the memory test, so we're not going to be able to make our way into that system. Again, even that two gig module, I thought that memory frequency test would be a little bit quicker, but we'll leave that there. And at the end of the video, what I'll do is rather than have you guys wait around for the completion of this test, I'm just going to fast forward and tack on at the end of that video exactly how the memory test ends. But I'm going to wrap things up here from me. Um, Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it has cleared things up. I'm sorry, I hit the mic there. Um, again, the previous video, uh, for those that have asked about it, given the results of this, I'm going to leave the old video up for maybe at least a month. I am going to link it to this one. I hopefully put some cards on the introduction, a few pinned comments there. But again, I'm going to leave that there just for a little bit to point at this video, and then I'll eventually either take that video as offline or I'll make that video unlisted or something. Well, again, we'll examine uh, the options on YouTube there. But again, this has been my unofficial memory testing in the latest revision of DSM 7.1, as well as addressing some of the questions, some of the errors, some of the routines of what we did in the previous one. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching this incredibly long video. Um, and otherwise, I will see you next time. And it looks like the memory test has completed. We've heard the system reboot. So let's make our way into the NAS, shall we? We've still got our login credentials from earlier. And we can have a little look. We're not seeing anything on screen that seemingly indicates that the memory's not been recognized. And there you go. There is that two gig module inside the NAS. The memory's been tested. And overall, I'll be honest with you, that did its job. But man alive, it took its time. What is it, 11.30 now? That is not a slow endeavor. And that was a two gig module. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.